Hey guys, welcome to Digital Training Channel on YouTube. And as you may know, I tend to focus a bit more on image processing and image analysis tasks. And as you know, uh, if you go back to my one of the earlier videos, I spent quite a bit of time talking about traditional image processing, whether it is Gaussian denoising or median denoising or image registrations. And then I slowly worked up uh, towards uh, traditional machine learning where we extract features and so on. And then eventually we moved on to deep learning for unit-based semantic segmentation, for example. And we looked at 2D and we looked at 3D, we looked at satellite and uh, BRATS type of data sets and so on. When we were talking about those, we learned about how we can actually read multiple files or how we can apply a, a task that we demonstrated on a single image, for example, like Gaussian denoising, and apply that to a folder full of images or apply that to a TIFF stack and so on. A question that I common uh, often get is how do you process uh, a whole slide image? And a whole slide image, as you probably know, is this large, large image that is like hundreds of thousands of pixels in X and Y, and you cannot load that into your memory and process it. So you have to load it in chunks. So how do we apply these processing to whole slide images? So to answer that, I am uh, planning on making two videos at least for sure, like the one that uh, you're watching right now and the next one. Uh, here I want to show you how to use open slide library. This is an amazing library to read. Of course there are other libraries, but I just want to show you the one that I'm most familiar with, which is open slide library to read these images and how do we get like extract different tiles and so on. In the next uh, video, I will show you uh, how to process each of these tiles once we extract them. Uh, I'm, for that, I'm going to use uh, normalization of H and E stained images and also extracting the H and E individual signals, uh, you know, separated. So that would be the plan for the next video. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into the code to see how, first of all, we can in install Open Slide on Windows and uh, just get familiar with this library. Okay, so let's jump in. And uh, I am going to share this uh, file with you. So with all the notes and everything, so hopefully you'll find that useful. So first of all, Open Slide is a library that can read virtual slides in several formats. And these formats, uh, I think SVS is probably the most common one that you're uh, used to. And this is by Apero. And uh, there's also .tiff format, Hamamatsu, formats and then Leica, Mirax, Philips, and uh, everyone's got, uh, sometimes it's just a TIFF file, but sometimes it can be a proprietary format such as .svs or .czi or something else. So OpenSlide can read these virtual slides. And uh, to download this, just go to openslide.org slash download. And uh, here, first of all, uh, it's two-step process. So go ahead and pip install open slide Python. So go ahead and do that like you normally would. And also go to this place because once you do pip install, you're not done. That's not the end of, in, in fact, that's step one. Step two, to finish this, go to this link, open slide, and go ahead and download. So what did I say here? the latest Windows binaries. Why Windows? Because we are working on Windows, right? So if you're working on Mac, obviously go ahead and find yours. So go ahead and uh, download the Windows binaries. I downloaded the 64-bit uh, one, the latest one right there. Once you download that, what do you do next? So let's go back. Once you download it, go ahead and extract the contents to a place that you can locate. So where did I do that? In fact, uh, I'll get to that in a second. So go ahead and a uh, place where you can locate. I usually put that along with my open slide installation in Anaconda directory, but it's up to you. Wherever you can uh, find it, go ahead and uh, place it. Now, when you run this, when you go ahead and open uh, import open slide, if it throws an error, and if the error looks something like this, when error 126, the specified module could not be found, uh, then you need, that means the path is not clear to the system. You have to add the path. And how do you do that? So open this file called lowlevel.py and it's located in site packages open slide. If you don't know how to locate that, I have these lines of code that I typically use. So let's go ahead and paste it here and run it. It tells me exactly where my path is for this installation, for this environment that I'm working with right now. So this is my Python 3.7 uh, environment, which is located right here. So my site packages folder is right there. 
So let me go there and open the open slide thing. So let's just open one of these and let me paste it up here. Okay, there you go. And I need to locate my open slide. Let's go ahead and type O, open slide right there. So within open slide, you'll see this file called lowlevel.py. So go ahead and open that file and let's increase the size so you can see it on your screen. And once you open it, you need to add the path to this file. So again, let's go back here and then uh, uh, add this at the top after this line in low, low level.py. So after the future line, like from future import division, because you cannot have anything above from future, so it'll throw another error. So after this line, go ahead and add this. This is basically, okay, import OS and to the OS environment path, go ahead and add this path. What is the path? The path is wherever my binaries are located. By the way, I downloaded my binaries to Python, where did I do that? Uh, lib site packages, open slide. Within my open slide, I, uh, I extracted the contents of the binary. Remember the one that we just downloaded from this site. So I extracted that to, where is my open slide? Right there, right here. And within there, there is a file, uh, sorry, directory called bin. And here are the DLLs that are required for this other library to work with. Okay. so. This is the path I added right there, all the way, slash bin, go ahead and add that line. And when you do that, then I, it knows exactly where to look for when uh, it's looking for a DLL, that's it. Okay, so it's not as straightforward as just pip install. It's of course pip install plus download the binaries and add the path to the binaries to your, uh, to your uh, low level uh, directory, uh, sorry, file right there. Okay, assuming you all have it, now let's go ahead and start understanding open slide uh, library. So let's go ahead and remove everything and start from scratch. Okay, so now that we have this, I have downloaded, I forgot the source, I should have remembered the source. I Google searched literally for SVS files and I downloaded a whole slide image SVS file, which is about 643 megabytes, but in reality, these can be, uh, a few tens of gigabytes, uh, you know, some of these files. So that's why this exercise is very important. Okay, so at least we have an SVS file that we can start with. Now what? So let's uh, understand how we can load it and how we can understand the properties and a few other things associated with this file. Starting with, how do you Im uh, import your open slide? Again, you can just do import open slide, but most of the time I end up working with open underscore slide uh, method from this library. So let's go ahead and import that. Okay, so there you go, no errors. So my path and everything is working fine. And let's also go ahead and import open slide in case we need any other functionality from here. Uh, and uh, I'm opening pillow in case you want to resize images because open slide images, once you extract those, they are in the pillow image format. So you need to convert them into NumPy if you want to process them using uh, anything that's based on NumPy. Okay, so uh, talking about NumPy, let's go ahead and import our NumPy and also matplotlib pyplot so we can go ahead and plot some of these. Okay, the libraries are done. Now let's open the image. Open, uh, sorry, image is the wrong term in this case. Let's open slide, okay? So how do you do that? So remember this open underscore slide or open slide dot open underscore slide. We are going to use that. And all you need to do is just this and provide the path to your file and assign that to a variable. And as you will see up here, this is not a NumPy array. This is basically an open slide object that contains many, many things in there. And we'll extract a few things uh, from this open slide object, starting with properties. I just wanna get a quick idea of what properties are associated with this slide. So it's nothing but once you have uh, you know, this object, it's just slide.properties and it extracts all the properties. And again, this is a, a property map object. So let's go ahead and print it so you can see exactly what's in here. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. There is a uh, magnification, there is ID, there is a, a lot of things. And you can go ahead and look at this or uh, if you're interested in a specific uh, information, for example, uh, who is the vendor? for this image. You can just, in the slide properties, go ahead and look for open slide dot vendor. So we can go ahead and print that. Obviously it's an SVS file, so the vendor is Apero. And uh, 
if you are curious about what is the dimension pixel size and uh, hopefully this is an isometric pixel where x and y size is the same because this is optical microscope so let's go ahead and get x pixel value 0.5 uh, this is in microns by the way or 500 nanometers so uh, so 0.5 microns 0.5 microns in x and y dimensions so as you can see from properties you can extract a lot and let's do one more and then move on so let's actually get from the properties uh, objective what objective was used we earlier saw that it's probably 20x let's go ahead and print it the objective power is 20x so this image this entire uh, slide has been collected at 20x okay now what else can you get let's get uh, a by the way, when we talk about this open slide, this slide is not just like one large image. It's actually a pyramid structure with different levels in there. So the information is stored at different magnifications or different pixel sizes, uh, whatever you want to call that. So when we, if we want to get what is the native resolution of this, go ahead and do slide dot dimensions. It's going to give you the level zero dimension. So you think of this as level zero, level one, level two, level three at uh, different levels that the information is stored. So this is almost like Google Maps, right? I mean, when you are at very low, you see the entire United States and you keep zooming in, it loads the specific tile. That's exactly what we are talking about. So at a very low resolution, you don't need you don't need individual tile type of information. You just need a low level information, low level information. Uh, 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 low resolution, I should say, image. So that's what the slide dimension, when you do the slide dot dimensions, it's going to give you the dimensions at native resolution. In this example, this is 32K by 38K. Very large, fairly large image. And remember, these can go up to 100K by 100K, or so even much larger than those, depending on the objective and also depending on your sample size. Okay, so, uh, we have a large image, we know that. Now, how do we start extracting or how do we start visualizing this? So first of all, let's get a thumbnail. That means, uh, just like a pillow image, a thumbnail is a resized image of this entire 32K by 38.4K. So in this case, I am defining this my, uh, as 600 by 600. So again, slide.getThumbnail. Okay, so once we extract the slide, it's basically slide dot what you want to do. And open slide has extensive documentation, very useful documentation. So what I can show you is probably less than a percent of what you can do with open slide. But I want to make sure you feel comfortable with this library to the point where you start exploring their documentation and of course, find the things that you really want to do with your large uh, images. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and get the thumbnail 600 by 600 and when you see that the thumbnail is in the image format you see the uppercase i that's basically your uh, that's your uh, pillow image so it's uh, almost uh, it's, it's showing me as 499 by 600 uh, image right there so uh, i mean it's 499 by 600 because our native image is not a square shape right so even though i say 600 by 600 it's showing me the entire image rescaled to the 500 or 499 by 600 there so let's go ahead and show that image this gives us a good understanding of okay this is what we're dealing with this is how the image looks like and if you keep zooming in uh, obviously this is a 600 by 600 uh, image so of course it's going to be very blurred right here so i'm not looking at a pyramid image this is not google maps image i'm looking at i'm just looking at the low resolution image and that's it and zooming in so this is 600 by 600 very useful for visualization, not useful for any processing or getting any real information. So let's keep learning a bit more about this. So now that you have a 600 uh, by 600 or 499 by 600 image, let's say you would like to process it using any of the functions that are based on NumPy arrays. So first of all, we need to convert this into a NumPy array. How do you convert a pillow image into NumPy array? It's just numpy.array whatever that pillow image is. And now you should have immediately a NumPy array right there. As you can see, 600 by 499 by three. This is color image, so three channels. So let's go ahead and visualize that using our pie plot. Again, now once I go here, you can see that's the image that we are looking at. And now you're all ready to process this using any of the functions like, I mean, whether it is Gaussian denoising, whether it is median filtering, whatever you want to do, go ahead and do that. 
on this resized image. Okay, let's keep learning a bit more about the different levels actually. So I mentioned we have like level zero, which is the native resolution, and then you may have level one, two, three, four, five. How many levels? It, it completely depends on the file itself, how it got stored originally. So the, first of all, let's go ahead and figure out what dimensions do we have uh, uh, in, this, in this image. So let's, uh, for that, slide dot level underscore dimensions. Remember, previously we just did slide dot dimensions, which gives you the level zero information. Now we want all information. So let's go ahead and do that and assign that to a variable called dims. And if you look up here, you see dims is showing us three different levels. The native resolution of 32K by 38 and a half, 8K by 9.6, 2K by 2.4. Okay, so that's the difference. So if you want number of uh, uh, dimensions, we know that this is three. So I'm just printing it down here. And dimensions of various levels, I'm just printing the dimensions right there, which we just saw. Okay, now, if you don't care about exact dimensions, but what is the scaling factor between these different dimensions? Because obviously you have your native image, and then there probably was a scaling factor saying, hey, uh, bin it down to four times and bin it down to 10 times or 16 times, whatever it is, and then you get these different levels. So if you are interested in what those different level uh, levels are, it's slide.level down samples. It tells you what the factors by how much each of these images are binned. And here, the native resolution, obviously, not uh, uh, binned. And then you have 4x and 16x for each of these levels. Obviously, it makes sense when you look at the dimensions, eight times four, about 32, and uh, two times 16, about 32 right there, okay? So that's that, and now let's copy an image from a level. So for that, let's say, okay, I want uh, I want level three, which is a 2K by uh, 2.4K image. So first of all, let's go ahead and extract the dimensions of that. So we already got the dimensions, so I want the second one, which is zero, one, two, right? So that's the level three dimension and level three dimensions should be 2K by 2.4K. And why do why did I do that? So I can tell my slide.read region what dimension image I should be extracting. So to get a subset, sorry about that message, to get a subset from your slide or to read a small region from within your slide, you have to tell exactly from what level you would like to get that because if you get it from level zero, it looks, it has a different resolution, right? If you look at level zero, our image resolution is th the 30K by 30K or whatever, 32K by 38K, right? And if you do that, and if you say my, okay, I want an image of dimensions 2K by 2.4K, you'll probably get top left region, that's it. So three things that are re uh, required to extract a region from your slide. Until you do this, the image is in your local hard drive. It's not in your memory yet. We are loading this image into the memory. How are we doing that? First of all, what is the top left pixel? So let's, you, can, you can give a central pixel. In this example, I gave top left because my dimensions are going to be the full image dimensions for level two. I hope that makes sense. So my level two is 2K by 2.4K, right? So the dimensions right there are 2K to, where is it? Yeah, 2000 by 2404. So extract an image of 2000 by 2404 size from level two with top left at 0.0. .0. So that's exactly what we are doing there so level three image now let's go ahead and uh, by the way this is important when you look at your level three image you see it's 2k by 2400 that's no surprise but the mode of this image is rgba it's four channel image rgb and the alpha channel so we need to convert this to rgb if we want to uh, look at it so that's exactly what i'm doing right there and then let's go ahead and look at this image. And this should look pretty much the same, except in this case, this is 2K by 2400. So the resolution is much better than 600 by 600. So you do see some finer details, but not a lot of details here. Okay, now next step. Let us go ahead and convert this level three RGB image into a NumPy array. So let's do that and go ahead and plt.imshow 
So we can go ahead and work with this image. So at this point, now level three image NumPy is a NumPy array of 2400 by 2000 by three. And oh, by the way, if you swap between uh, pillow image and NumPy array, the height and width are kind of uh, changed. I'm pretty sure you know that. I just want to make sure for those of you who haven't realized this. So anyway, so this is the dimension of our NumPy array. And now this is a bunch of uh, unsigned integer eight numbers. And now we can do whatever we want with this image. So this is one way of uh, working with this. And uh, before jumping on to the deep zoom generator, one final thing, you can actually provide a scaling factor and then scale your image to that specific factor and not just stick with the level, different levels, level zero, one, and two. So in this example, I'm giving scaling factor of 32. And now let's say, uh, uh, by the way, uh, this that I'm showing you here, slide.get get best level for down sample. It tells you, okay, if you want to scale it down by 32, just work with this image, this level image. So by 32 means it's pretty small, right? So 32 by divided by 32. So we're talking, we're saying, okay, I want to work with 1k by 1k image. So suggest me the best level I should be importing this 1k by 1k image from. So when I do that, best level, it should probably return slide two so what's the variable best level so it's telling us okay level two is the best one so if you change this to like okay my scaling factor is uh, four times okay so 32 by four whatever that is uh, 8k by 8k or so so what is the best level image that i should be working with and now if the best level it's saying level is zero that's again one other minor point there so let me change this back to 32 because I'll be sharing this file with you. I want to make sure things are back to normal. Okay, so now, until now, we looked at how we can actually downscale the image from our very large image. Now let's look at how we can take this large image, read it tile by tile, and do something with that. I'll show you what to do with that in the next video, but how do we actually extract tile by tile? How Just get a quick understanding of what this do, deep zoom generator is. So first of all, uh, again, uh, if you have installed your open slide, then this is part of it. So from open slide .deep, zoom, deep zoom, go ahead and import the de import deep zoom generator. And now I'm going to apply this deep zoom generator to the slide that we have with and say, divide this image into a tile size of 256. In this case, I chose not to have any overlap pixels, but you can say, okay, uh, five pixels or uh, 16 pixels or eight pixels, whatever you want the overlap to be, go ahead and do that. And again, look at the documentation because there are many more uh, options that you can actually define. Uh, and maybe one of those is useful for the task that you plan on doing. So let's go ahead and apply this and I'm capturing that into another variable called tiles. And this is also going to be an object. So when I apply it, let's go down to tiles. So here it's a deep zoom generator object. And now we can extract many things, just like how we extracted information from our slide. Now we can extract information from our tiles. So our slide is now tiles. And this is another pyramid. So think of the tiles as actually uh, another Google Maps. Now, with the ability of us to extract individual tiles or get information from uh, tiles at different levels and so on. So let's understand what this tiles is. Okay, again, this is the deep zoom generator object. So what can we get? What information can we get? And this stores the information at different levels again. Remember our slide stored information at three different levels. That doesn't mean the tiles here has three different levels. This reconstructed the entire thing based on what we provided down here. Okay, so our tiles, first of all, check the number of levels in the tiles object. Let's go ahead and print that. And number of levels are 17. Let me scroll up. The number of levels are 17 in this case. So what are they? The dimensions of each of these levels. So let's go ahead and look at. So of course, one by one, and then gradually all the way to 32 by 38.4 uh, kilo uh, pixels right there. Yeah. So I hope that makes uh, sense. So all of these uh, 17, now we can get a bit more information. For example, uh, you can add all of these and how many total number of tiles do we actually have? So that's tiles.tile underscore count. 
okay so this is tiles underscore level dimensions just like before so we got the uh, information tile count so this gives us 25,451 tiles that's a lot of tiles uh, obviously this is a large image so for, for let's say we are interested in level number 11 I let's go ahead I think that's this one uh, 1k by 1.2k and uh, tiles shape at that level what is the shape of the tiles at this level because remember this image is divided into an image of 256 by 256 dimensions right that's exactly what our tile size is so if you take this image and divide this into 256 this is pretty predictable right one 1001 uh, if i can find my keyboard divided by 256 that's 3.9 so meaning about four tiles to define this image you need four tiles three tiles at full resolution 256 and another tile at 0.9 times 256 resolution i hope that makes sense and 1203 divided by 256 is what about five uh, it is five i mean you cannot have 4.6 tiles right so it's basically four tiles and another tile that's kind of small now to get that information all you need to do is the at that level what is the shape of the tile so my level is number 11 and tiles dot level underscore tiles i'm just providing the uh, sh uh, you know the number right there so let's go ahead and define that first and now let's go ahead and print it says four by five we already know that except we did the math manually obviously here it's saying hey at this level you have these many tiles five by four uh, four if you, i mean in this case the multiplication is easy but uh, in some cases you may have thousands of uh, tiles so in here uh, in this case at this level we have 20 tiles each 256 by 256 except for the last ones that where that can be much smaller than 256 by 256 okay so that's the information at that level and uh, if you want a specific one because we have four by five right so this is Think of this as a grid you have one two three four one two three four so what is the dimensions of one by one which is let's say the top one so let's go ahead and do that the dimensions of the top level title dimensions title dimensions right there 256 by 256 i wonder if it goes uh, this is something i don't know if it goes from zero or if it goes from one so let's go ahead and print zero yeah, it works. So it goes from 0, 0, 0, 0001, 0, 02, 0, 03, and uh, 1112. If you say, give me the shape of 5x5, five five, there is no 5x5. Five five. It should probably throw an error saying, hey, that's an invalid address. There are, you only have 4x5 five tiles. So if you go 4x5, this is also invalid uh, because we have 3x4. The numbers go from 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So 3x4. So let's go ahead and do that and title dimensions. This must be less than 255 by sorry 256 by 256 obviously this is the last tile we're looking at the size of that is 233 by 179 okay so i hope things make sense so far and uh, now let's look at how many tiles do we have in the largest size remember we have uh, I, sh I can print maybe i should print that one more time rather than going all the way back uh, to, 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 where is that uh, total number of tile level dimensions this is what I, yeah so number 16 is this one so how many tiles are there in this level so if you go down and uh, right there okay so this is tile count in large image so we have 126 by 151 so that many tiles and each tile is 256 by 256 that's a lot of information by the way right and uh, uh, get the dimensions again I'm picking some random one within within our entire 250 uh, how many do we have uh, 126 by 151 right so let's look at the tile number 120th by 140 again tile dimensions 256 by 256 how about the last one 125 by 150 this should be much smaller you see this is only one pixel by 74 pixels so this, these are the hanging edge ones because our image size is not perfectly div divisible by 256 that's it okay so let's extract a single tile here and then have a quick look at it so let's extract from the highest resolution image this uh, the one that's positioned at 62 by 70 so that's the single tile we are extracting and let's convert that to rgb otherwise remember when you use get tile 
So single tile, let's go back. Single tile is a RG, oh, I didn't realize that this is an RGB uh, image. Uh, I thought this was RGBA, but it doesn't matter. I'm just converting that to RGB right there. And then let's go ahead and show it. There you go. That's a single tile of 256 by 256. So this is the native resolution at 20x that we are seeing here. That's not binned. Okay. Now, all of that is good. What if I want to just go ahead and save all the tiles onto my drive? at native resolution. Then you can use those for deep learning, for example. Then you can say, okay, just uh, work with uh, 500 of those tiles, or maybe even less, like 100 of those, and uh, label them, and uh, just go ahead and train a deep learning algorithm, apply it, and all that kind of fun stuff that you do with uh, your images. So how do you do that? So basically, you probably know exactly where I'm headed, right? So uh, how many images do we have? Columns by rows. We know that this is uh, 126 by 151, that many images we have. So we have to iterate through the rows, iterate through the columns, and for each of these tiles, we just need to save it. That's it. Now you have a tile, which is, uh, you know, a single image. You just go ahead and uh, save, that, save the file. So in this case, I extracted the tile with that specific location, we know that, right? So get underscore tile is where you're getting that tile. I converted that to RGB. Maybe it's not required. I was under the impression that the image would be RGBA, so I was converting, but again, this doesn't hurt. Adds a little bit of processing time. And then once I convert that to a pillow image, now I convert that into NumPy array, and then uh, saving it using PyPlot, you can use OpenCV, you can use scikit image, it doesn't matter. Once it's in an NumPy format, you can use any of these to save them. I saved them as PNG. I stopped them in the middle. I don't want to save all of these. So uh, let me go ahead and show you my save tiles in original tiles right there. So I have a whole bunch of these tiles right there. Let me expand this so you can see. So you can see many of them are blank and some information there. And uh, I'm sorry some information there and as I go down now you can see the full information right here in some of these slides and there's blank slides right there it's up to you what you want to do with the bank blank slides or the ones where you don't have much of any information it depends on exactly what you're trying to do if you're trying to use these for deep learning obviously the blank ones are absolutely useless you can go ahead and manually remove them by looking at these or you can uh, write a uh, small function to figure out exactly which ones are blank ones. We're going to do that in our next video anyway, because when we try to normalize these images, it fails if, the inf if this image has no information or if it has very little information like this. So we have to find a way to identify these tiles and then process them in a different way or discard them and so on. So I'll save that for the next tutorial, but until now, I hope at least you feel a little bit comfortable, first of all, installing this open slide library and then to get a bit familiar in terms of uh, how to process this, how to extract subregions and how to downsample it and work with the downsampled image or just how to extract a smaller region within your larger image and then take that smaller region and then divide that into tiles and save those tiles and so on. Uh, Let's meet again in the next video. Until then, again, I hope you appreciate this. If you really like these type of videos, hit uh, the like button so I know that you like these videos. Thank you, guys, and do not forget to subscribe to this channel.